Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and today we're gonna make one of the fastest recipes I know, um, easiest recipes. This is a chicken and potato and tomato stew. Um, very few ingredients. Um, I learned this one actually from my wife, who is from Colombia. Um, so her family lives in Bogota, and in Bogota is like very high elevation. Um, I can't remember exactly, something, something like 8,000 feet, higher, higher than Denver. Um, <clears throat> And so at that elevation, pressure cookers become very useful because um, at that, you know, the higher you go, the lower the boiling temperature of water, so the longer things takes to cook. And in fact, some things won't even cook if you go high enough. Um, so a pressure cooker is what you use to overcome that obstacle um, because a pressure cooker increases the boiling temperature of the water so you can cook things hotter. Um, this recipe uses a pressure cooker. Um, so it's just chicken, just a few ingredients, right? Chicken. Those are chicken legs. Um, I, I'll, I'll link to the printed recipe. I think the printed recipe probably calls for a little bit more because it's for four servings as opposed to this. I'm making probably about two and a half servings or three servings. Um, but those are chicken legs. You can use chicken breasts as well, or um, you can use all drumsticks, all thighs. Any kind of chicken pieces is fine. You just want bone in and skin on. Um, and you season them with salt and pepper. Dump them in there raw. And this is a Yukon Gold potato, a couple of them. Dump them in there raw. Take your onion. Take off the outer layers. Cut into slivers like this. I aim sort of, I go sort of towards the center so you get these wedges. Dump those in there raw. You take a tomato. I'm using this um, beefsteak tomato. You can use um, Roma. You can probably even use cherry tomatoes. Um, just roughly cut it up. And then that goes in there raw. And finally, a couple bay leaves. Those also go in there raw. All right, now I'm gonna season all this. In fact, I didn't even need to season the chicken at first. I could just season everything together at the end. Salt, pepper. Give it a little stir. Now, you'll notice I'm once again breaking one of the cardinal rules of pressure cookers, which is that I'm not adding any liquid. Um, and that's because the raw chicken and the raw tomatoes and the raw onions um, and even the potatoes all have a lot of water in them. And as they start to come up to like a, uh, as they start to heat up, they're gonna re release that liquid. That liquid is going to create the steam that's going to then um, create the pressure that allows you to cook things. So you don't need to add any extra liquid to this at all. Um, just close it. This will work in an instant pot. It'll work on a stovetop pressure cooker. Um, I'm using this one from Breville. So I'm going at high pressure, which is here is 12 PSI um, plus, uh, and I'm going at 15 minutes. So that's 15 minutes after it gets to pressure um, is how long it's going to cook. Um, I think the written recipe I have calls for 25 minutes. Um, it's really kind of overkill. I, I don't know why I wrote 25 minutes the first time, but uh, 15 minutes is plenty. So as soon as it comes to pressure, this timer is going to start. If you're doing it on the stovetop, you would let it come to pressure as soon as the steam starts popping out and you see the uh, pressure indicator. It depends on what kind of pressure cooker you have, but there'll be a pressure indicator as soon as it gets to high pressure pressure, you start your 15 minute timer, adjust the temperature to keep it there. Um, and then, well, I'll show you, I'll be back as soon as this is done cooking, which should be just about 25 minutes total. So it took about 10 minutes for it to come up to pressure. And then once it was up to pressure, it cooked for 15 minutes and now it's done. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to just do a quick release on here. If you have a, uh, Stove top pressure cooker, what you can do is you can take it and bring it to the sink and run it under cold water to quickly chill it down. But with an um, electric pressure cooker like this, we want to let all the steam out. So all that steam in there is uh, that's what was creating the pressure inside here, um, which in turn increases the boiling point of the water because pressure going down means that it's more difficult for water. It takes more energy for the water to um, vaporize and reach that, reach that boiling temperature. Um, and so because of that, the chicken in here cooks really fast. So the chicken was cooking for about 15 minutes. Um, it was at 12 PSI, so I think that's at around 200. 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 12 PSI above normal um, atmospheric pressure, that is. Um, so that's around, at this, uh, at, at around sea level, which is basically where I am right now, that's around 240, maybe 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and the basic rule of thumb for chemical 
um, processes, chemical reactions, is that for every 10 degrees um, you go up, it uh, doubles the rate of the um, of the reaction. So when you go up uh, by 40 degrees Fahrenheit, or 20, sorry, that's t every 10 degrees Celsius, by the way. So when you go up by 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, so around 10 degrees Celsius, um, you're doubling, your, your things are gonna cook twice as fast. If you go up by 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, then your things are gonna cook four times as fast. So 15 minutes at, a high, pr at high pressure in a pressure cooker is the equivalent of about an hour um, of normal simmering on the stovetop or in the oven, normal braising. All right, so this is, a, pressure's almost out. I got my nice Colombian plate here. Um, and let me get a big spoon because this is going to be juicy. Take these guys. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, this recipe, I mean, it's crazy. The, whew, there you go. The um, flavor to effort ratio on this is just kind of off the charts because, I mean, as you saw, it took virtually no work. Um, I just dumped a bunch of things into a pressure cooker and you end up with this lovely, lovely chicken and potato stew. Um, and all the liquid in there, remember we didn't add any extra water, nothing. So all the liquid in here is straight from the vegetables and the chicken. Um, so it's like a super, super concentrated broth. And if, if you want it a little bit thicker, you can always um, reduce this a little bit. You know, your pressure cooker might have a reduced setting or you can do it on the stove top, just uh, simmer it a little bit till, the, till that sauce reduces down and it gets as thick as you like it. But um, I kind of like it a little bit brothy like this. Doesn't that look delicious? This is, this is one of those things where I know there's probably gonna be some, um, particularly Americans, really enjoy, um, I think get turned off by um, non-colored chicken skin, like in the U.S. we really like things brown and crispy, and I agree, golden brown and crispy is great, but I also enjoy the texture and flavor of um, just braised skin, chicken skin like this. Um, of course, you can always take it off if you don't feel like it. The one thing I wouldn't recommend doing is trying to brown it before you close the pressure cooker, um, because if, if you brown it, what happens is first you draw, draw, drive off moisture from the chicken, and then you have to evaporate that moisture. And that's the only way you're gonna brown it. And by the time you've evaporated the moisture, then there's not enough moisture left in there to effectively um, build up pressure in here. So if you're going to brown your chicken first, which you, I mean, you can do it. If you're going to brown your chicken first, then you're going to need to add um, a couple of extra, a, couple, a cup or two of uh, chicken broth. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Let me try a bite. Hmm. It's really like, yeah, it's incredible the amount of flavor that you get out of this broth. Um, so this dish, oh man, and it's so like rich and gelatinous from that chicken. Um, this dish, um, as I mentioned, I learned it from my wife, who's Colombian. Um, it's not like a very stereotypical Colombian dish, although it does have very typical Colombian ingredients. So potatoes um, are from the Andes. Um, and this tomato and tomato and onion mixture is a common combination um, in Colombian cuisine. Um, anyhow, easy pressure cooker, four or five ingredients. I don't know, maybe six if you include salt and pepper. Um, Pressure cooker, chicken, potato, and tomato stew. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe, wear a mask. Uh, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me. Uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye-bye.